Hey, listen to me, you whining little whelp. From the Getty's Bike Tour Studio. Hey, everyone, it's Cameron. Shut up! You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg Today. There is no time. Hello, exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> Zabawa? It's called COVID. <laughs> Mike, can you show him how to how to share a link? Acts like he's 90 years old. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Honestly, my 87-year-old grandmother has figured this shit out. <laughs> I know. I don't understand. Uh, we are uh, trying to get uh, Bo Brinkman to figure out how to use his phone. It's not easy. There we go. Now, you listening to the show there, Bo? I, uh, not Sounds yet. like it. Yeah. Sounds uh, like you had it there. Oh, yeah. I got it. Yeah, I, let's let's listen to ourselves a, a couple of minutes ago. Listen. I don't understand. We're listening. Put it up to the mic, Bo. Put what up? The phone. Oh. So people can. It's not easy. There we go. Now you listen to the show there, Bo? I, uh, not Sounds yet. like it. <laughs> it's very confusing. Everybody's like, what the hell's going on? I just heard this part. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, this episode of Addressing Gettysburg Today. I hope you're doing well. Of course you're doing well because you're listening to us. And that means that you are highly intelligent. You have a great sense of humor. And you are also... Uh, well, that's about it. That's about it. But isn't that enough? I believe that is enough. Uh, excuse me. I'm just uh, adjusting my uh, stuff here. Uh, Veronica. Okay, so you got to turn that down, Bo. <laughs> oh. It was good for a bit, but now you <laughs> you could watch the show right up here. You don't need to. Uh, it's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you don't hey, need to actually it's watch like the... It's like we're traveling back in time, wow. but it's only like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> so I know. Cool. I can actually just watch it from the big, on the big screen. Yeah, you just watch it. On, that's why we have that. There. We have a monitor. Yeah. Yes. It, makes, really? it, it yeah. makes it easy for everybody. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, like I said, we're, uh, we're here on a Thursday. Normally, we do this Friday. But uh, we're going down to uh, Brandy Station. Uh well, Saturday we're going to be at Brandy Station, but uh, I'm going uh, tomorrow, going to stay with my families, and then get up in the morning and go to, to Brandy, and we're going to record a show there uh, nice. for next year for the 160th anniversary. I'm just going to record it, leave it in the can. Awesome. That's what we're going to do. I like to have things uh, in the can. Yeah, so do I. I Someone's just... going to take that out of context. I almost did just that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the uh, that's the story there with all that stuff. That's why we're doing the show today. And Bo is uh, here to talk about something uh, very, very special and near and dear to his heart, which we'll get to in the second segment, uh, because, uh, well, that's how it works on the show. You know, we do a little banter in the beginning, and then we uh, we get to the guest in the second segment, because, yes. you know, you want people to give, uh, you give them time to, to come in and, and all yeah, that stuff, yeah. you know. But have uh, have you been, Bo? Had you been up here all summer, right? Uh, since July 6th. And uh, are you enjoying yourself? Uh, you love it here. Always in Gettysburg. You were just saying that you love it here and that you would like to move here full time. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, the longer I stay up here, the, the more I want to be here full time. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a, it's an awesome little place to live. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. you said, the people are nice. You, yep. like, you like the weather. I could do without the winter. I could do without the humidity in the summer, too. I'm starting mm-hmm. to switch. I used to like the extreme hot yeah. of summer. Yeah. And now, as I get older and fatter, I prefer the spring and fall, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Although I'm never going to turn summer down. I love being, you know, I love it being light till 9 o'clock. And sure, I, I like that, too. But, you know, in uh, Clear Lake, Texas, where I now reside, it's 100 degrees every day uh, from uh, mid-June until... Mid September. Yeah, that's and with uh, the eighty per seventy percent humidity. It, it's that's know. too much. Yeah, that's too much. So after a while, it gets old. You know. Yeah, it does. I can I can understand that. I, I guess like if you lived anywhere, like if I lived in Alaska, I mean I already know I would be sick of winter because uh, I think what their summer is like twenty five minutes up there, right? Yeah. And then then it's back to winter. Oh, yeah, so it's horrible. that would drive me nuts. But then mm. again, if I lived in like maybe Arizona or New Mexico or Texas. 
uh, I probably would get sick of it always being nice, you know, because I grew up in a place that has seasons. That's what I miss. You know, when I lived in New York City, I just fell in love with the East Coast. Really? And the Four Seasons. I mean, there's... Well, they're a great band. I mean, Frankie <laughs> Valley, my God. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I just love it up here. I like the small town living here and uh, the yeah. people and the history, and uh, it's just lovely. And you can, and it's like you walk, you can walk around town, and will most likely get recognized at some point, which is always nice, isn't it? Oh well, I mean, I guess. I'm not saying that's a reason you want to move here. I'm just saying that's a nice little perk for you. Well, I mean, the movie Gettysburg was. Uh, you know, it's nice when people, you know, like something you've done. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's nice. No, it makes it feel good. Still watching the movie, and you know, that's nice. That's always nice. And and you've um, you've you've kept together over that's thirty years ago, but mm. you, you still look good. You know, you don't look uh, like you hit the wall or anything like mm. that. And uh, and that probably helps too. Yeah. You know, people can. It's easier to recognize it. You know, you just throw thirty years on the face they know from thirty years ago. And boom, there you are. Yeah, a little whiter, your hair. A little whiter, and but yeah. it works for you. But I don't, I don't look like Orson Welles or anything. So. No, no, that would be I terrible. Serve no wine before it's time. Yes. What? Uh. Oh, was that that uh, Black Tower? Oh. Didn't he do commercials for Black Tower? Uh... He did in his latter years. He did these <laughs> wine commercials for. Mond uh, Davi, oh, but, Robert Mondavi. Yes, yeah, some, yeah. some really rank wine, that, you know, like Boone's Farm. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, almost. It was just a step up from that. Yeah, and he's like, "It'll serve no wine before it's time." <laughs> he was like, "Wait, yeah, uh, right, is dude. that the one where there's uh, the bloopers another... of him being drunk?" I don't know. During the commercial, <laughs> I'd love to see those bloopers. Oh my god, <laughs> it's fantastic! I'll have to find them. Uh, yeah, he he's like. He's drunk while they're shooting, and he keeps messing up. And then the director's like, you know, try that again. You know, this time, don't say whatever. And he goes, what are you talking about? I said, I said it perfectly, you know. All right, all right, let's try it again. Well, I sit down for a lovely dinner, and I just you know, Black Tower, you know, or whatever the hell it was. So, yeah, he, uh, I'll have to find that for you someday, because it's, uh, it's, it's a hoot. It's a hoot. <laughs> Speaking of a hoot, I was at... Um, uh, the Farnsworth house the other day because you know they have a bookstore there mm -hmm. and I, I went in to, uh, to talk to Libby the manager and uh, she wasn't available so I, I ended up just looking through some books and um, uh, there's several there's many used books there from Tim Smith's personal library mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, so there were there were uh, two books there that I wanted to get they are part of a three volume set but the third volume was sold uh, and I, I said hey Tim uh, you uh you sure you don't want to come down a little on the price of these books because they're, you know, kind of falling apart. They're old and falling apart. So he's like, oh, you downstairs? I said, yeah. He's like, all right, I'll come downstairs. So he's downstairs, and, you know, we, we deal with the books, and, and that's all that, and everything's taken care of. But there was a guy there that I was talking to earlier, and he was explaining that he came up, I believe he said from Texas. Might have been, no, I don't know, down south. He came up. I think Georgia. It was actually Georgia. And he... Uh, uh, he's a, a paranormal investigator mm. and he's on his way to New York to investigate some haunted house or something like that. And he thought he'd stop here and stay at the Farnsworth house in the most haunted room at the Farnsworth house. Cause why not? Right. So anyway, we're talking and he, uh, he, he resumes the conversation we had when Tim walked in and I paid attention to Tim and in it, he says, referring to, um, uh, he, he's referring to a, a mass grave, that they uncovered when they were building the uh, football field over at the middle school. Whoa. Which is bullshit. And, and so, <laughs> well, the, so there's the punchline because Tim across the room heard this and he yells out bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, he, he, he just goes, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and then I started laughing and the guy says, well, that's what the guide, that's what the tour guide told me. And then Tim was just like, 
bullshit. And then, he, and then so he's like, tour guide? What kind of tour guide? And uh, he goes, well, it's a ghost tour guide. And Tim's like, yeah, there's a, he goes, hey, there's that, real. that's not true. That's, yes. And he went on, you know, the whole thing about how it's not true. <laughs> but it was great because it was alive in front of people. Bullshit. Across the room, Tim just yelled. And you could tell, like, he, he heard it and it was like a visceral reaction, right? Like, he didn't have any time to think about it. It was just came from the gut and he was just like, bullshit. <laughs> and, and it made its way across the whole uh, the whole room. And I that poor guy, love Tim. I do too. And that poor guy, though he he looked uh, he looked dejected after after that moment. But uh, hey, what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah. What are you gonna do? That's funny. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Um, let's see here. What's the other thing? Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you were at the August twentieth show and you haven't taken advantage of your exclusive coupon code, what are you waiting for? Um, only you guys have this code, and it expires on September 20th. So it's only good for a limited time. Uh, make sure that you get in there and you get yourself a T-shirt. It doesn't have to be the T-shirt. The It doesn't have to be the uh, Addressing Gettysburg on campaign T-shirt. It can be uh, whatever you want. You get 20% off with your uh, promo code there. So uh, don't delay. It expires uh, uh, September 20th. And uh, while you're there, make sure you check out the other designs that uh, – Tied to Wit has because he does our stickers, he does our logos. Uh, well, the logo was Mike Stretch, but uh, Ty does logos for you know the designs. I guess is the word I'm looking for 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 the shirts and things like that. So make sure you uh, test that out or not test that out, but you uh, check those out. Go buy our shit. Go buy our shit. Um, so we don't have anything set in stone yet, but uh, the AG Roadshow Committee. Um, emboldened by the success of the August 20th show, is all excited about putting on new events and, and other things like that. And so we are going to uh, try to do a, a Christmas party, if we can, if we can find the venue for it. We're going to try to do a Christmas party, um, and that's going to be something for patrons only. It's going to be uh, an exclusive thing. We're going to start doing that uh, in 2023, where we do things that are just for the patrons because, uh, you know, the patrons keep us going. And a lot of people have been there from the beginning and have not yet canceled. So that is, uh, that is nice. And even when, they, even when times are tight and they need to tighten the belt a little bit, they just lower the amount. They don't cancel it outright. And, um, and that, that is appreciated for sure. Uh, so we want to do something uh, for them. Uh, we don't know exactly what it's going to be, but just uh, keep your eyes and ears open for details on the Christmas uh, party, which is, of course, going to include all of us going to the square and caroling. We're going to carol. Um, we're, uh, the, the, the choir practices have begun. Actually, you know what's funny? Uh, Mike Lentz is here. Uh, hi, Mike. How you doing? Yeah, doing well. Good, good. Eric, did you know uh, our buddy Cam, of course, yes. is... Uh, yes, he's, he's out there in uh, uh, West Virginia teaching the children, shaping and sculpting and molding the minds of the youth of Merca. Is he indeed? He is. <laughs> and you know how he's like a permanent sub, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so uh, this, this, this is crazy to me, but the, I guess this is how they do things in West Virginia. Um, Maybe he, not that crazy. For a week, he had to fill in for the music teacher. Oh, my. <laughs> and the kid, he, kid can't carry a tune, let alone play an instrument. No, no. <laughs> um, but he had to get, you know, he had to teach them. I don't know how he did this. He hasn't told me how he did this, but he did send me an audio recording of them playing the dance of the sugar plum fairies. You know that song? Oh, boy. Yes. And so here it is. That's you know, real. No, I, I knew when you were fucking around on the <laughs> internet <laughs> earlier yeah. that somehow that was going to come back. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's not a musician, but that's pretty good for not being a musician teaching those kids that. I don't know. I'm impressed hmm. by him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sounds... Okay, kids, one, two, three, four. Go and go. <laughs> Oh. 
Mr. Mallow's opus. <laughs> oh, good God, do we love Cameron, don't we? Don't we love Cameron? We you love, love Cameron, Cameron Bo. You always ask I about do, Cam. I do. How's Cameron, you say? Yeah. And I say, who cares? And you say, that's not nice. He's a wonderful young lad. Yes. What do you like about Cam? Uh, his openness. He's and very he, open. He's like Bambi, you know? He's just like, you know, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. Like hey! Bambi. How's he like Bambi? <laughs> he's just innocent. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, right, he's right. just this innocent, <laughs> right? you know, just a... He reminds me sweet. more of like Thumper or... Yeah. He's just a sweet kid. You he know? is. He is. Sweet kid. A lot of people don't realize he's 52 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody thinks he's a kid. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. All right. Well, so here's what we're going to do, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to uh, take a break. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk to Bo about this very excited, exciting, but super secret project that we haven't talked about yet. We're going to talk about it when we get back. We think we're going to have a, a fun uh, call-in guest. We might have a guest call-in as well. So uh, we'll be right back. Right. At AddressingGettysburg.com. Be sure to include the reason why you think you'd make a good guest when you write us. The Giants marching home again. Hurrah, hurrah. We'll give them a hearty welcome then. Hurrah. Very family friendly. We had a wonderful time with our son. Me and my friends were able to uh, rent these bikes and go at our own pace. So we were able to just do what we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. And I highly recommend it to anybody else. It seemed like the right way to go to view the, the wonderful sights and also get an incredible amount of history from Bob. Our tour guide Bruce was so knowledgeable about the facts and the history of these battlefields that I came away with an understanding uh, that was unmatched by any other means. The breeze on the battlefield made up for the hot day. They had a wonderful time, uh, great trip, lots of history, um, wonderful bike ride, perfect weather, could have asked for a nicer day. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, if you're going to tour Gettysburg, I would recommend doing it on the bike. It's a lot of fun. I loved it. It was awesome. Um, we really couldn't stump the professor with any of our questions, so uh, we, we thought it was really well worth it. It was an excellent day out and got you outside and experienced the weather. It's beautiful weather out here today. We had a lot of fun. If you're thinking about it, I would just say give it a shot. It was awesome for us. I hope it's awesome for you guys too. Go to Gettysbike.com or call 717-752-7752 to book a battlefield experience you will never forget. You've heard us promote various ways that you can help us keep the show going, but one way we haven't pushed too much is our sutlery at AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop. That's a shame because we have designs over there by talented artists like Ty DeWitt of 1863 Designs and Mike Stretch of the Heritage Depot. So now we're promoting it. Buying shirts, hoodies, mugs, and other items from our sutlery not only helps us keep the lights on, but it also helps guys like Ty and Mike, and it helps spread the word about the show every time you wear an item or you sip from your mug. So head over to AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop and grab some merch. It's the perfect Christmas gift for the Gettys nerd in your family. That's AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop. Notice our revamped website at AddressingGettysburg.com? Well, that's the fine work of a man named Mike Stretch, and he also redid our logo for us. Both of them I originally designed, and both of them were originally horrible, but now they're nice, and that's all thanks to Mike. Mike has an awesome t-shirt company called Heritage Depot. There you'll find great designs based on Gettysburg and the Civil War with t-shirts and other types of merchandise. So go to Heritage-Depot.com and spruce up your Gettys Nerd wardrobe. That's heritage-depot.com. 
Our favorite bookstore in Gettysburg is For the Historian, located at 42 York Street. It's because they have the best selection of Civil War books in Gettysburg, both new and used. And online, they have even more to choose from. And if the Civil War isn't your thing, that's not a problem. This is For the Historian, after all. They cover history from the ancient world to the 21st century with a strong selection of World War II and American Revolution books. It's astounding how many thousands of titles from Osprey, Savas Beatty, UNC Press, and more they have in their store. And that's because, well, they have a warehouse too. And that's where they keep all the books that are available online at ForTheHistorian.com. And folks, if you go to ForTheHistorian.com now and order books until you're blue in the face, be sure you mention that you heard about them on Address in Gettysburg in the Note to Seller box, and they will refund your shipping costs. And if you prefer to stop by when you're in town, well, you could do that too. Just mention Address in Gettysburg at checkout, and they'll take 20% off the retail price of your item. So go to ForTheHistorian.com, stop by 42 York Street, or you can call them at 717-685-5207. That's ForTheHistorian.com or 717-685-5207. From the patriots of Bunker Hill to those who embarked upon the Great Crusade at Normandy. From the blue-clad Federals at Gettysburg who gave the last full measure of devotion to the many thousands who did the same at places like Bella Wood, Chosen, Yadrong, and Fallujah. The American warrior is the greatest warrior the world has ever known, who, through sacrifice and dedication to the nation they served, have composed a history worthy of being remembered. Join me, Colby Sumner, to hear their story and to connect our current and future American warriors to those of our past on America, Fog of War. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. back with Cam's Idol. Uh-uh, that was years ago. Here's Matt. Uh, a very important thing I forgot to mention uh, before the break. You know, one thing that we learned uh, doing the uh, two in-person shows this year uh, is that we need an opening act. We need someone to warm up the crowd. That isn't me or Eric or anybody else. And uh, I was meeting with the uh, the committee, and uh, I, uh, I said, uh, hey, you know what I should do? Is I should uh, turn to the audience, because we have a, a, a large audience, and there's gotta be people with talent in it. I mean, all the talented people that have come forth thus far can't be the only ones, right? There must be others. Right. Yep. Uh, so we are, uh, we're looking for, I don't know, a band, we're looking for, or just a musical act of some sort. Even if you're an aspiring uh, comedian, or if you are a comedian, and you actually, you know, go out and, and do uh, shows and stuff. Or even a juggler. Or a juggler. <laughs> uh, a burlesque dancer, yeah. perhaps, although we try to Tango. keep it family friendly. Um, but yeah, whatever. Um, maybe something I haven't thought of. Maybe something I haven't mentioned just now. So... Uh, if you if you are so inclined to uh, want to do this, uh, send an email to Matt at addressinggettysburg.com and a sample of whatever it is that you do. Well, Cam's a a, a goldfish trainer. He, uh, he also plays the uh, Jews harp very well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Down, 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 yeah, down, yeah. He does. He's great at it. <clears throat> you should hear him play along to Up on Cripple Creek. It's uh, mm. just beautiful the way mm. he does that. Mm. But yeah, so send the email to Matt at addressinggettysburg.com and a sample, some kind of demo, something like that. But listen here, I- I'm going to say something. I'm all I love, I love to help people who are just starting things. Mm. Okay. However, you, you you could just be starting something, but you got to have it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Bo. Oh, yeah. You got to have it. You got to have the it factor. The it factor. And I'm not talking about, I mean, look, obviously, you're not going to be, you know, I don't know, name a great band. You're not going to be that good if you're a music. Maybe you will, but you're not going to be that big. What my point is, have something because you're going to actually have to perform in front of an audience. So we don't want anybody choking. And we want to energize the audience. 
I feel uh, like last time, you know, I went out there, I talked to everybody, I said, okay, here's what we're going to do, here's how it's going to go, blah, 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 blah. But it really wasn't a warm up, it was just an informational thing. And really, I shouldn't be doing that. Eric shouldn't be doing that. We're on the show. So we need to be, you know, sequestered for that hour ahead of time and let somebody else go out there and, and work the crowd. You understand this, Bo. Yes, I do. You're in the business of show. You know how it works. Mm. So that's it. Once again, Matt at AddressingGettysburg.com. Matt at AddressingGettysburg.com. All right. So what are we talking about today? Well, well, well. <laughs> it is. What is it, Bo? It's called a Gettysburg Christmas. A Gettysburg Christmas. Now, um, this is a movie. Yes. And this movie is um, going to, wh when do you hope to go into production with the movie? January. But we're going to do, I'm going to bring my DP up. Um, That's director of photography. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I'm going to bring him up for the Christmas festival. Mm -hmm. And I might bring him back the following Friday for the tuba. Um, you got to get the tuba. Yeah, it's you got to so get so great. Is it? I've never seen it. Oh, but I mean, I, but just like, but just the idea of like, you know, these tuba mm -hmm. players in the square. It's great. Well, they do it at the hotel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right up at yeah. the top there. Yeah, or at the top on the on the porch, oh, right? On the porch. Yeah, yeah. No, that that's very. It's very um, Norman Rockwell very. around here at that's Christmas the time. time. Someone said that today. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, I've always said that um, since I first moved here, and I especially at Christmas time, it's it's very Norman Rockwell feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Norman Rockwell didn't have people with blue hair or green hair or pink hair, uh, you know, in his paintings. But things change. But still, the the setting looks yeah. very Rockwellian. Absolutely. Uh, it, so so that's good. So you're gonna you're gonna bring sweet. the director of photography up to get shots. I'm assuming. Yeah, we're just uh, we call it gorilla shots. Uh, just uh, covering some of the uh, Christmas festival uh, for B-roll. Right. And the tuba festival will merge those. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. B before principal photography, which will start in January. <clears throat> now. You, uh, let's tell everybody what it's about a little bit. Tell us what it's about. Well, you know, I don't want to call it a Hallmark type film, but. but you know what? Embrace it, Bo. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It's a sweet little film. <clears throat> um, it's fine. How it all came about was uh, two years ago. You know, people were coming up to me going, you know, we need another m a movie, another movie to bring people to Gettysburg, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody was saying, well, you know, what about a Civil War movie and, and all that? And I finally ended up saying, look, it's almost impossible to get another Civil War movie up. Right. First of all, the financing is gigantic and Hollywood's not going to pay for it. You know, they're just not. Mm -hmm. um, especially the last couple of Civil War films did not do well. Right. Well, um, they didn't do them well. And they weren't done well. Right. Right. But um, you which know, ones are you every, talking about? I don't even know. I'm not going to mention them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I'm not talking about I'm not talking about Gettysburg. No, you know, um, but so so I, I notice which one he didn't mention. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make any money. If a movie doesn't make money, it's hard to make a sequel or a prequel. Of course, or or, or another right. one like it. Right? Yeah, another of one like it. It's all about plus, money. Plus, Civil War movies become redundant. I'm sorry, they yeah. do. I mean, you, you know, I've always been looking for a, a way to, uh, you know, do a Civil War movie that wasn't about people just shooting blank guns at each other. Right. You know what I mean? Well, uh, so, never, right. so you bring that up. Um, so for, for those of you in the audience who are like, Hallmark movie? Yeah. Christmas? It's, what? Yeah, what nah, is this? It, what, Matt, what are you doing? Put, exactly. What, have you, what has happened to you? So Listen, here's the idea behind it. There's a long-term plan for this, right, Bo? <laughs> Absolutely. So here's the plan. All right, so people were coming up to me, you know, like, hey, we need, and you included, we need to make a movie that'll bring people to Gettysburg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I ran across this little story and I called it Gettysburg Christmas, and the title just stuck out to me. That's and I a thought, Craig Rupp uh, classic. Craig, Craig Rupp mm -hmm. wrote this little story, and I thought, I can make a movie for this, and it can be well done in low budget. And uh, it, and so what I did was, is I wrote around everything I know in Gettysburg. You know, like different store shops and the Farnsworth and the Dobbin House. There's, a, you know, 
all these different places, the Christmas store, the, right. the, the Christmas house, yeah. you know, and the chocolate. And the chocolate place next, next door. door. Love the chocolate place. And we've got a beautiful um, farm that we've got to shoot at. It's gorgeous up in the, you know, apple country. I was, we went there, we, right? We went yeah. there, yeah. Oh my God, that place. It's in that, uh, for that, oh that living gosh. room oh and the porch. Oh my gosh. And we went up there during Christmas. We took some wild shots of it. Just yeah. To, so the idea behind that is, first of all, during the holidays, it's the the slowest time of the year. Mm -hmm. Tourism is like zero, just about right. So, well, well, well it's just not what. <laughs> but it it's is. not what it is. It's it's starting to taper off. So you know, the idea behind this is to to bring um, visitors, tourists during that season because mm -hmm. there's a lot to offer. There's a ski. There's a ski uh, lodge. That's right, Ski Liberty. Ski Liberty, you. which we have some scenes at. Okay. And uh, it's like a postcard that the country will see. Right. You know, and, and, and it, here's my thing. And they'll on discover it. the history. Somebody, I was talking with Dale Gallen because Dale Gallen. Uh, oh, yeah. We have the picture. Go ahead. Yeah, Talk about it. Eric, yeah. you want to put that up while he's talking about it? Go ahead. Dale Gallen has, uh, I asked him to, I took a picture of the bridge in the winter and I asked him if he would do uh, a, a portrait of this, a painting of that, and add whatever he wanted to. Uh, you know, artist yeah. reception. And, and it's, so, but you know what? I love this painting because it's very simple, but it's so well done. And, uh, you know, I paint, right? And I always zoom in if it's a photograph. I always zoom in. If it's an actual painting, I'll go yeah. right up to it. And I want to see brush strokes to figure out how they get these looks, you know? And like, I'm looking at the trees in the background and I go, okay, why did, why did his look so good and mine look so blah? Right. And I go and I look at it. I'm like, I don't understand. I do all the same stuff that he's doing, but he just has that master stroke. He's got the master stroke. Mm -hmm. and, and so when I presented it to him, I said, I want to do this because I want it to help. It's going to go to investors who invest and also uh, people who donate a thousand dollars or more. Mm -hmm. And it's a signed and limited edition of, of signed and limited uh, numbered uh, lithographs uh, print. Yeah, yeah. that will come matted uh, and shrink wrapped on a hardboard, hard board behind it. Right. So, but he asked me, he goes, yeah, sure, I'll do it. But what does this have to do with the Civil War? Mm -hmm. nothing. And the answer to that is, is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you what it does have. It brings people to Gettysburg for one reason, which is to absorb the Christmas ideal holiday. Uh -huh. And you can't get to Gettysburg without discovering the history. There is no way. We're surrounded by the Civil War history. We, we've seen it with, with ghost people where they'll come here interested in the ghosts and everything because they've seen it on some stupid show. And then they come and, and they, they like the town. They come back again. And as they're getting all their ghost stories and stuff in, they're getting doses of history with you have to. Right. Because yeah. that's the background of the ghost story. Unavoidable. Now, of course, the history is usually bogus or wrong or yeah, crappy right. or shab shabbily put together. But it, that's not the point. Like Gary Edelman always says, it's easier to undo the mess uh, than it is to. Whatever the hell, I forgot what it was, <laughs> to, to teach them from the ground up. I forget what he says, right. but it's easier to undo the mess of other people because at least you've got the interest there and all that other stuff. But what I like about this idea, Bo, for this film is it is not related to the Civil War. Yeah. And because it's not related to the Civil War, we have the potential to, to bring people to this town who are... I'm going to I'm, I'm going to say romantics like, you know, the people that watch these types of movies they're um, And this movie is not as cheesy as most of the Hallmark movies, but it, no, it, it does. No, but of, I'm saying the people yeah. that like Christmas movies yeah. and romantic Christmas movies yeah. like a Hallmark movie. Yeah, they're there are a certain type. They idealize things. Mm -hmm. They idealize Christmas. They idealize love. They idealize a place that of. Christmas movie was shot in and then they want to go there. And the beauty of this is that you're putting in the movie places where they can actually go. Right. So 
when they when they see the movie, oh, I'm like, oh, that's so lovely. We should go there. And then, you know, maybe they Google, oh, is there really a German chocolate place in Gettysburg? <laughs> exactly. And it's like, yeah, there is. And is there really you can a, go a Christmas there. store? Is there really a Christmas oh, store right next door? Yes, there is. Is there really a Christmas tree farm that's beautiful out there in the cut? Yes, there is. There's all this stuff that it's all real stuff. And you're doing that on purpose because you you're trying to sell the place, right? Yeah. You want it, you want to help it. And I think that's a great thing. And we want to help Gettysburg, which is why we're promoting this. But also, I mean, let's be honest, Bo. Well, let's let's talk a little bit of the synopsis first, and, and I'll work oh, this. Oh, okay, in, go okay? ahead. All right. So let me. You just. Uh, well, you, you, I'll, I'll read, read it, it. and yeah. then you you just tell me whatever you want to add. Okay. Right. So here's the synopsis. Hope Kelly. She's the main character. Right. She's uh, she's depressed. She's well. She, she's lonely. She's lonely. She uh, she had to make a life changing decision years ago. She bought an apple farm in this area. She was a lawyer. She was a lawyer, and that yes. pissed off her dad because her dad was, was a lawyer. She, he wanted and she her left. to be part of the law firm, so he's pissed off because he spent you know seven years. <coughs> he paid for seven years of college, and right. now his daughter's yeah. running a apple farm. An apple farm, you know. Yeah, I paid for all that school, and you're getting an apple farm. You know, like you know, I understand that. Her ex fiance yes. left her for another woman right before a previous Christmas. Yes. This woman has had a hard time. So she's given up on love and Christmas. She and is a holidays. female Scrooge. Yes. But she's lonely because she's also a human being, well, as was escaped, Ebenezer. She escaped. She bought this on a just on a whim. She yeah. buys this apple farm and then it, it, she's isolated. Yes. You know, at first she finds peace and then Beautiful, the isolation. It's idyllic, yeah. She finally, should have just taken a month long vacation. <laughs> she should have gone to Tahiti. Exactly. But she didn't. So she bought. Anyway, so uh, what her family. So there was a big. Oh, so her father and her get into this big Christmas Eve blowout. Yeah, this is the backstory of the, the backstory. Yeah. 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 And so so there there uh, there's a rift between the father and daughter. Yes. And and all that. So uh, but but the, everybody decides that they're going to go. Her mother, her brother, they're all going to go. To her house for Christmas. Does yeah. she invite them? Uh, I don't remember this the, part. The, the brother and the mother uh, kind of orchestrated. Or, or, orchestrated. And they it. drag dad. And dragging dad along, right. you know, because they haven't talked in two years. Now, her brother, Ryan, is played by Jake Busey. Mm. He has a girlfriend, Emily. Um, and um, they come to Gettysburg, blah, 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 blah. But Ryan's old army buddy, Nick, also shows up. Now, this is the part that you're giving me, right? Nick, <laughs> yeah, the, the romantic. The uh, romantic former. Uh, this is why we've been going to the gym, because sure. I've got yeah. to look like uh, That's right. I'm, I was get... once in the army. Yeah. And so. I was once in the army. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> Eric's giving us the finger now in case. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... Well, Eric, there's a part for you. You could be the German chocolatier. Hey, that's a great that, idea. Yeah, he would be a good German chocolatier. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. Is that hello? How do you say hello? Oh, that's good. Buddy. Oh, guten Tag. <laughs> guten Tag. <laughs> would you like the chocolate? The chocolate? Ooh, can you wear some wooden clogs? <laughs> Wait, is it German or Dutch? That's Dutch. <laughs> Okay, but okay, Dutch is fine. I like the no, it's in German. Like it's not idea. Dutch chocolate. It's German chocolate. I just chocolate. like the idea of him in wooden clothes. I do too. <laughs> and we give him like he wears lederhosen, Later and uh, 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 but I, he wears that hat though, his I, his Bucktails hat. I am a goddamn veteran, and I don't have to put up with this bullshit. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Put that in your uh, juice box and suck it. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> See, I think it'd be the perfect German chocolate <laughs> too. <too>. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so all right, so, well, we'll talk. So yeah, you don't yeah, seem so, too sure that I'm going to get that part. So we'll talk about that. But who? Uh, but also Lee Major. So so Charlie, the character of Charlie yes, comes along. Yeah. And you know, of course, in all these movies, there has to be in any story, mm. right? When you have someone who is who is closed off to the world, yeah. there's got to be that one person that that, that gets through to them, yeah. that makes them see what they're missing or whatever. Yes. And that's Charlie in this movie. Is, yes. Is Charlie a ghost? Uh, well, yes, he is, actually. But we never say he's a ghost. Oh. He's just a ghostly Christmas spirit. You never know he's a ghost, but he disappears a lot. Okay. So, like, he's there one minute. Okay, so she doesn't know he's a ghost. No. And the Towards audience... Towards the end, he kind of, she kind of realizes that, you know... Because she sees his tombstone. No. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, still. So, uh, and you got Lee Majors to play him. Yeah. The $6 million man. Yes, yes. That's awesome. He's perfect for the role, too. If you saw him, you'd, you'd go, oh, my God. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen him before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he he's 84. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've and seen a picture. You sent me a you showed yeah. me a picture of him the other day. He walk he walks like a teenager. I mean, the guy's got it going on. I, I just him. hope I live that long, yeah. and I hope I look a little uh, just as, as good as he does because yeah. he looks fantastic. You know, he takes care of himself. And He's are feral. you gonna are you gonna? Uh, I know you you may not have talked to anybody, but are you thinking maybe uh, getting some people from I would love Gettysburg? To. In I this? would love to do it just for fun. I think have, you know, I think honestly, if you could get. A couple of the guys, I know. just a couple. Yeah, I think it would tickle people. I know. I would love to like Tim Ruddy to be like Tim would be great. Yeah, maybe behind the chocolatier thing. You yeah, know, maybe he's like Eric's assistant. You know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely thinking of bringing some guys just for fun and to, just for cameos. Right. It'd be it'd be fun. I think it would be great. I mean, you you've got actors from the movie, mm -hmm. you know, and and then me as the romantic lead, mm. um, and it's just like Gettysburg celebrities all around. Yes, you know? there you go. And I don't know why he always laughs when I bring up me in that part. <laughs> oh, I can't fathom why. I can't either. Thank you, Eric. Uh, but whatever. Maybe you just don't see me that way because I'm always joking around. But I could be romantic. Yeah, oh. I guess. <laughs> you're, you're not even interested in going down that road. <laughs> not even for a laugh. Okay, uh, so let's see. Uh, it looks like we've got a call here. I don't know um, who it is, but uh, this could be... Oh, wait a second. Is this who I think it is, or is this not who I think it is? Uh, caller, you're on the air. Get that phone to get me in. What's that? Uh, Cameron? Yeah? <laughs> What are you my, up my, to? My. What do you have our phone number like saved in your phone? <laughs> it's not even up on the screen. Yeah, so yeah, I looked on one of your previous YouTube videos. You looked on the previous YouTube videos, okay? Oh, there you go. All we right, gotta make sure we take those previous ones down. Yeah, I'm gonna have to delete all the previous ones. Cameron. Uh... <laughs> Hello, Cameron. Cameron, previously you were telling us uh, about your adventures in North Dakota, but now you're in West Virginia. But we don't have uh, time, unless you have something very important to talk about. Um, I want to ask you, uh, are you excited about the prospect of this movie, A Gettysburg Christmas, by Bo Brinkman, and starring me? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, uh, well, no. I think it should have me in it, not you. Well, I, I think we could definitely find it. Like a homeless guy. He could play a homeless guy or something. Or vendor. He can play a, maybe a vendor. Or how wa about walnut? Uh, you could play walnut. like a, a high school kid that everybody's beaten up and then the main character has to rescue you. <laughs> like they're putting sh oh, snow down your shirt and everything. And then, and then I come along and I'm like, hey, guys, I was once in the army and I'm recently falling in love. <laughs> And it's Christmas time. That's Stop nice. picking on this kid. Right, Eric? That's what you guys do, right? Yeah, that's it. Protectors of all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right, Cameron, really, seriously. Oh, what, what, uh, do you have anything on your mind? Because I have an important person on the line. Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that, the movie idea. I mean, I could put a little bit of my life out. I could picture the movie already on the big screens and... I see a lot of familiarity with uh, the characters of why I've moved to Gettysburg. Oh, it's turning into the Cameron story again. Here we go. Okay, Cameron, no, why did you move not. to Gettysburg? Was it for the chocolate store or what? <laughs> no, for the history. Ah, the history. Ah, the go. history. Now, let me ask you this, Cameron. But if, I, if, hold on. If the movie Gettysburg was never made, but you saw a Gettysburg Christmas first, do you think would that you would... become an elf? Would you become... There you go. Thank you. Would you be coming out? No. Would would that would that make you come here? I told that. I think it, still, yeah, it would. I think it would, right? Because you are a romantic. You have your uh, beautiful girlfriend Janelle waiting to come up here, right, and visit us this weekend. Yeah. Uh, sweet Janelle. Yeah. yeah. And, oh uh, my! Here we go. With that. What have you been talking oh, about? Oh, but I wanted to tell you. All right. Moving. <laughs> You've been talking about. But moving. I wanted to tell you. Right. Um, <laughs> I uh, also wanted to mention that they now got a couple of videos of me on Peach Orchard publication. 
Yes, yes, I heard. Or actually, I saw them. And... Uh, I'm really excited to do more stuff uh, with uh, future and publication in the future. All right. Oh, that's great, Cameron. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, so listen, uh, let me ask you this, Cameron. What is your favorite Jake Busey movie? I don't know if I've ever really seen one of his movies, to be honest. I bet you have. Is is that uh, is did he play in Gettysburg? No, he wasn't in Gettysburg. Is That's Gettysburg the only, the only movie, movie you've ever seen? Ever seen? <laughs> no, he's definitely seen Gods and Generals. What? <laughs> um, well, why don't you tell Jake Busey right now that you've never seen one of his movies? Because I think that's very rude of you. Oh, I don't know what. It is. I'm sorry. You talked, Jake Cameron. You were talking over Jake. Jake, hello. Hey, welcome Jake. to the show. Well, hello, fellas. How are you? <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> so, Listen, I know you're good. I'm watching the show. I'm listening to the show. And all I know is this guy hasn't seen any movies if he hadn't seen any without me in it. That's what I'm saying. That, we couldn't believe it. I mean, I got to, let's see. I got to talk about myself here. Just how crazy I am. <laughs> um, well... Uh, that only means he's missed out on about 150 movies. There you and go. And about 20 TV series. Yeah, Cameron. So you got some bad. catching up to do. Yeah, Cameron. <laughs> hey, Cameron, did you ever see Starship Trooper? There you go. Um, no, I've always, <laughs> to be honest, no. <laughs> Cameron, did you ever see... Did you ever see... Um, Jake does Jericho. What is this in the world is that movie? <laughs> oh, that's just a little. How about, have you ever that's seen... A, that's I, a grown-up film. Cameron, have you ever seen Identity? <laughs> nope. God, bless America. Cameron, can you, have, can you name all the movies you've seen on one hand? <laughs> Let's see. McClintock. McClintock. Uh, True Grit. <laughs> We are Brahma, <laughs> Gettysburg, uh, uh, Gettysburg, uh, no, uh, Allegheny Uprising, Rough Riders. Okay. Um, I'm sensing a Dodgers theme. Generals. Okay. Okay. Got okay. It. I, got it. It. I get it. I get it, Cameron. I got oh, well, a theme. I got Cameron, a theme. Cameron, uh, just to interject here, Cameron, you and I, you and I might have crossed paths on, on the, uh, through the big screen. I almost was in Rough Riders, but I had to turn it down. I couldn't do it. I didn't actually turn it down, but they wouldn't let me film because I was doing two other films. One was called Contact, and the other one, uh, Enemy of the State. Ah. You probably haven't heard of either one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I haven't heard of them. <laughs> Cam, you are really embarrassing me here. I have a big star on the line. I'm and... sorry. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, he, you could have hung up on him already. Uh, so. <laughs> it's true. I thought I would give him a thrill. But all right, you know what, Cam? Listen, uh, we'll see you when you come back in town next week. I'm sure I'll see you at Antietam or something like that. But I really... I I'll, must be in, I'll be in next week. I'm coming in hey, tomorrow can, evening. Okay, not so loud, Cam. Can we get him a case, can we get him a case of turtle wax for, for uh, participating? <laughs> <laughs> a consolation prize. Listen, Cam, I'm, what I'm going to do right. is I'm going to get you uh, my top... Uh, I'm just going to start with three. Three favorite Jake Busey movies. I'm going to get them for you on DVD because I'm sure you don't do digital downloads or anything like that. So I will, I, will, I, will, I will educate you on some great movies that you've missed out on. I'm sorry. It's just the area I grew up in. It's what I grew up watching all my life. No, it's, it's totally understandable. We don't have TVs everywhere. Especially in West Virginia. Yeah. Well, actually, a lot of people don't realize... Oh, oh, Jesus. A lot of people don't realize this, that in Cam's town, the movie theater is just getting the first run of Jaws. So... <laughs> they're, oh, that's a low blow right there. <laughs> they're, they're a little behind. <laughs> All right, Cameron... I got to go. I have a very important person on the phone here, okay? Not that you're not important, but today right, you're not, right. okay? 
All right, Cam. Thank you very much. All right, all right. You told me to... I'm sorry. I hung up on you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> How so, could J- that have happened? <laughs> I don't know. It was just totally <laughs> accidental. Hey, Jake Busey, thank you very much for coming on here talking with us. Uh, you're going to be playing uh, my friend uh, and the brother of the main character uh, in the in the film uh, mm-hmm. Gettysburg Christmas. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and I'm looking and as a producer. To He's coming in as a producer. Yeah. He's going to be helping that's us. Really, Go that's, ahead. Uh, I think that's really going to be my main my main involvement with the film is uh, uh, moving into a foray here, a new foray with my with my man Bo. Um, you know, we've um, we've done some stuff together, and now it's time to really, uh, uh, you know, for me move into a new realm with the career and Bo has always been such a champion of mine uh, whether it's been acting or directing or producing or what have you and um you know uh just such a good friend without Bo, a lot of great things wouldn't happen in my life and uh so i'm very thankful and i i can't wait for this uh days for christmas to get going well, you know, he uh, is c- constantly, I, I hang out with him quite often, constantly talking about you, Jake. No. Good guy. Good guy. <laughs> oh, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, I'm telling you what a good guy he is. Yeah. You know? No, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's see, not, I, you know, he's not I, spilling I, any secrets. I mean, he's no, just. No, 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 but, I, you know, there's a lot of actors that I, I don't you like. Know, well, I don't want to say don't like, but, yeah, I don't <laughs> like. You know, they're. The, the, the narcissism and the, you know. Of course. You know, and, uh, you know, Jake reminds me of somebody I grew up with. Like a normal guy. He's like somebody I grew up with. Jake, and, were you born and, that, and raised in California? Yeah, but his people I was. Texas. I was born and raised. Yeah, but his yeah, people. Yeah, my, my, my family. Yeah, they're all uh, southern Texas. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, okay. So then that's good. Because right, your dad's from, yeah, your dad, your mom and dad are from Texas? Well, my dad is from, um, well, he was born in a place called Goose Creek, which is now called Baytown. Okay. And uh, so he he, uh, he grew up in, uh, in Texas, and then his father, my grandfather, was uh, a CB with the, with the Navy. And uh, so they moved around, and after World War II, uh, they settled in... Uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So my dad went back and forth between uh, school in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then um, pitching hay bales all summer long down in Houston. Okay. Yeah, so... And my mom is a Kansas girl. All right. So real people, in other words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good old wholesome Midwestern folks. Yeah. Yeah. And then Jake, you've you've gone back and forth to Texas your whole life, right? You've you know oh, seeing yeah. family yeah. and you yeah. know constantly. You know, Jake, yeah. I, I, I'm sure you you remember this clearly, but I actually met you here in Gettysburg many years ago. Um, you and your dad were both here for a convention, and uh, I met oh. <laughs> I met you by the elevator. Well, I, I actually went over to your tables and I got autographs. And then um, later on, I uh, I saw you by the elevators, and uh, we had a very brief conversation. And uh, you know, I said, you know, welcome to Gettysburg. Uh, you know, it's your first time here. But you know, small talk type stuff. And you said, uh, get away from me. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 how long ago was this? Oh, this had to. Well, this was my first time living here, so this had to be like two thousand eight, nine, or ten. Mm, okay, I don't remember exactly. So you have been. To well, Gettysburg. the only reason I would have said. Get away from me if you were wearing very skimpy uh, little bathing shorts. I, well, you he remember, was. you remember then, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was me. No, 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 no. You, did, you didn't it. say. You didn't say get away from me. I was just teasing you there. All right. So, so you're uh, you're, you're also a producer on this movie, Jake, right? Yeah, he's coming on as a yeah. producer. Yeah, yeah. So. He'll get to stay here the whole time. Well, what is what exactly does that mean? Because Bo has also told me that I'm a producer on this film, so clearly it, it can't mean that much. <laughs> no, no, there'll be two or three producers on the film. And uh, what am I supposed to do? Well, <laughs> inquiring well, I, minds want to you, know. Uh, <laughs> you're you're helping me. Before I tell you, go ahead, Jake. Go ahead, real Jake. quick. I, I got I got somebody. I got somebody who wants to say hello, and it's uh, the next generation of. 
of Busey here. This is my daughter, Autumn. Autumn! Say hi to everybody. Hey, hi. Autumn. Hi, honey. How are you? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good day at school today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody caught a little case of red light fever. <laughs> How old, how old are you, Autumn? Ten. Ten? Wow. All right. And so what grade is that? Fifth grade? Is it fifth? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Oh, I'm wow. I'm very happy. What's that? I'm very happy in fifth grade. Are you? Oh, nice. Were you not happy in fourth grade? Well, uh, I'm happy in all grades. Uh, okay. Fifth grade, we have... Pug point. The teacher is obsessed with koalas and pugs. Aww. So uh, we have pug points. Each time we reach 500 pug points, we get a class party, and that's really exciting. Oh, good. That is. Oh, right. You know, that's nice to hear yeah. that the, that a child likes school. I hated school, and everybody yeah. I know hated school. Oh, I like There's it. There's something about I this fun. generation because my nephew loves school. He's uh, I, he's her I age. Had a great he's 11. Time in school. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't get it. But you know, good for them. Because, yeah. I mean, maybe they'll get more out of I it than I, I did. I think I figured it out. Um, because I am a genius and I am amazing. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I, I honestly, I think what it is, is when, when, kids, when kids are not in school these days, they're, they're stuck at home. They're not mm -hmm. out riding bikes. They don't do the mm -mm. stuff that we did when yeah. in the 1980s and maybe with you, the 60s. But, you know, <laughs> like when, when, we were, when we were kids, you know, we, we were outside. We were actually, we had friends in our neighborhood that maybe we didn't even see at school. Right. Um, and, and I think that nowadays, they, uh, I, I, what I, one thing I noticed with her is that the, the times that she gets to spend with her friends are when she is at school. Otherwise, she's stuck with my boring rear end. <laughs> well, oh, that was nice. She's way more generous than any of my kids. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, really. You must be a good dad. He is. <laughs> yeah. He is. So then he gonna... really is. Oh, Aww, what a it. sweetheart. That Somebody nice. knows it's coming close to Christmas time. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Slipped her a hundred. Well, yeah. I'll, we'll go to Hot Topic in just a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah, I'm looking at your uh, at your uh, Wikipedia page here and all the movies that Cameron has missed, and it, it just is amazing to me because you've been in basically every movie that has come out since like what seventy eight was that your first film? <laughs> well, I've done a few. I've done a few. I've been real lucky, you know, and um, I um, I love working. Yeah. I love it, and if you know. Well, you know, seventy-eight would have been like a release date on a on a movie I did, like a, you know, I guess a, you know the a prior year before, year or whatever. Yeah. right? Um, Especially back then, yeah, I was about five, and um, but but I spent my my childhood on on film sets, and um, it's basically like growing up in a life of living uh, backstage, mm -hmm. and uh, I. I just, I just love it. I, it's my favorite place to be is on a film set. So, um, Same here. If I'm doing a movie, if I, yeah, if I'm doing, Bo understands. I mean, if I'm doing a film, I, I they think they're doing me a favor when they say, we're going to fly you out on Monday and fly you back on Wednesday, uh, and then we're going to fly you back on Friday and then send you back home on Sunday. I'd rather just stay. Yeah. I'd rather be there. Right. You know? Be a part of it. All. Well, what is it? What is it that um, makes you want to be there? Is it because you just like watching the process, or is it because you you feel that you're more part of the whole movie that if you're seeing what above. everybody's doing? All of the above. Well, yeah. I wasn't asking you, Bo. I was asking Jake. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jake. <laughs> no, that's my answer. Okay. Yeah. But, 
but he but I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. It's all the above. It, what you know because it it's combination of uh of summer camp and uh I, you know what what is it kind? It's like well it is like it's like summer camp uh but there's a paycheck at the end. I mean, mm-hmm. but there's there's it's really not even about the paycheck so much as it is, well, especially not anymore. But, uh, you know, there, the whole concept of artistic expression and uh, the energy that is, uh, you know, it's like a beehive of movie set. There's just so much going on and everybody, there's, there's you know, eight different departments. And they're all working in conjunction with each other, like spokes on a wheel. And and they all have their jobs, and they know what their jobs are, and they're so efficient, um, hopefully. Uh, and it really is a spectacle to watch if you know what you're watching. If mm-hmm. you don't know what you're watching, it's like someone who doesn't that's understand true. baseball right. watching baseball yeah. games. That's a, that's a good so, analogy. Uh yeah, it's not so much like hockey. It's it's, uh, it's a little more of the baseball vibe. But boy, I'll tell you what: uh, during that moment when the pitcher throws that ball and the batter swings and hits it, and it gets real exciting there. And <laughs> that's, those are those moments you live for. Yep. You yeah, know? the uh, the only real movie set I've been on was John Adams, uh, the HBO series, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, it it was really cool because it was like an army almost, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. As Jake was saying, like everybody's got their thing to do oh, and they all work together and all this stuff. Um, and it was uh, – now, I loved every minute of it. I, I was soaking it all in. But I could imagine if you're like used to it or you're only in it for the money or whatever, like it could be the most boring place on the planet because it's, it seemed like a lot of sitting around and waiting. There is a lot of sitting around. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean – there's a reason for that, and there's, it's the whole process, and it's just, I don't know. I find it very exciting, and I'd like to do more, which is why I'm very excited about having the uh, romantic lead in uh, <laughs> in a Gettysburg Christmas. He's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> why do you well, keep saying I'm kidding? Say, mm. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, you, you, I'll tell you, when the, the time where you could possibly be bored is the time when your, when your uh, department isn't working, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, and the other departments are doing their thing, and it, it really is, it, it, you know, actually there's an element that's like football in the sense that you've got the offense and defense, you know, it's like you've got um, the moments where we're filming and the actors are in front of the camera, and then you've got the moments where they tell the actors, okay, well, you guys go sit down. We're moving the camera. We're relighting. We're we're you know you got a half an hour, um, and you you know you go take a rest, which is often well deserved and well needed. And then you know you use that time to study and and uh, make sure that you're on fire for uh, for the next moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it. Uh, I don't know. It's it just. It sure seems like it beats a real job, even on the most boring days. I'm sure it is. Yeah, but it's a lot job. of work. Oh, it's, it's it's a lot of work. Uh, sure. A lot of work. Mentally, physically, yep. it's a, emotionally. Yeah. Um, when I did Stranger Things, we were doing um, 16-hour days. Yeah, those are long days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now you're in the third season of Stranger yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah, and I... I didn't watch it past the second, so now i got to go back and watch the third. Because <laughs> now that I've talked to somebody in it I, I feel like i need to so i mean it's a good show i like the show but i just is it in its fourth or fifth season i don't i think it's like 23rd season by now it's i'm a little behind a yeah i'm I don't not know really what sure it is. What are you, is it the fourth season currently, right now because currently like... the fourth season is streaming right okay yeah it's uh it's good have you seen and... it bo mm-hmm. yeah it's a good show um, it is yeah that was a good cover-up so, yeah, it's, 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 especially it's a great show if, if you were born right around somewhere around 1970 yeah you know, between like 68 and 70 
three. Uh, I happened to be born uh, on the exact year that put me the exact age of the kids. Um, you know, the, 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 the first season starts in Their kids. 1984. Yeah. yeah. And, and so when I watched the show, the, the show, the first, first season, when I first it was just, you know, uh, an observer, an audience member, uh, I thought, boy, this is just a really great show. And then I was talking with someone about it and they said, uh, they said, yeah, and boy, didn't they do a great job of recreating 1984? It's just such a great period piece, isn't it? And and I hadn't even realized it was a period piece because to me, that's the way the world works. <laughs> right, <I'm> right. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. No, it's it's a very good show. That, that that's not a, a cover up there. That yeah. is, it is a very good show. I just I get lazy with my shows. And if I have you know to wait months for the next season, I sometimes get out of the mood for it and yeah. eventually get back to it or whatever. Uh, Jake, you're a drummer. Oh yeah, I am. I was a I was a drummer too years ago. So you uh, you're right. you're a drummer. What uh, are you in a band or anything or? Oh, I've been in a million bands. Currently, I'm not in a band right now. It's uh, when Autumn was born. I kind of changed my lifestyle and. Um, really focused on on uh, on film and television, and uh, the band that I was in. You know, it's a different lifestyle. You're you're up all night, and you're uh, you're uh, you're out. You're gigging. You're you know. I, I I found myself 40 years old on a street corner, unloading drums, sweating my butt off making no money and 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 i thought what what am i doing yeah this is, this is uh you know it's fun and everything but i i gotta get serious about life so um i think unless you actually make it uh which i was never in a band that actually made it uh, uh it's always music is a wonderful expression and it's a great thing to share and uh but like playing together, you know, when you get a group of people together and you're, you, you're all creating one thing at the same time. And there's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's like a magical moment where you're, it's like balancing a bowling ball on a needle, you know, you're, it's, uh, <laughs> and it takes all of you together to keep this, this cohesive sound uh this it becomes almost timeless in the sense that um as the song progresses you're you're on to the next moment uh it's um i don't know i don't mean to get too heady and deep and stuff i love playing music but uh currently right now not in a band yeah it's it's fun to play music if you can find the right group of people to play with yeah, you know, you yeah. gotta you gotta have uh, you gotta gel with everybody. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, it looks like we have somebody calling yeah. in. I, I I hesitate to pick it up because I don't know if they are actually calling to talk to you, but they're calling during your interview, so I'm going to give them a chance. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Do you want to talk to Jake? Hey man, it's me again. Oh, God oh. damn it! <laughs> How do I hey, I, I had to call back in. I had to call back in and apologize. I've actually seen one of his movies, and it was one of my favorites. Okay. Which one? Twister. Okay. Hey, there, there you go. go. All that right. Was, um, yeah, I, I, and you didn't tell me you was talking to one of my favorite early childhood actors, uh, son. Uh, I've seen so his father in a lot of movies. So you, you didn't recognize the last name? No, I did not. Okay. Well, it's a uh, it's a common name. <laughs> yeah, I know about twelve Buseys. Oh, you know. Uh, <laughs> so they're all over the yeah, place. Yes, I have Sam, seen really your movies, and I do like them. <laughs> have you well, seen? Thank you. Have you seen Stranger Things, Cameron? No. 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 <laughs> Twister was, but the one I can say is I've seen Twister. Okay. So, well, sometimes I weep all I the just way wanted... home. 
Wow, dude. Well, thank you, Cameron. And you and your dad are some of the be- uh, some of my favorite top actors I've <laughs> ever seen in movies, along with Bo. <laughs> well, that is very, very nice of you to say. That's very nice, Cameron. It is, Cameron. It's very we nice of you to say. We love you, man. Yes, we're, we're just teasing you. We, we, uh, we do love Cameron. What is that noise? All right, I just wanted to... It's just me in my room. Oh, you're oh, okay. in your room. All right. I, you always call, and it I'm sounds in like you're in the room. space station. You're in your classroom. Okay. But you know how, like, yeah. you know how on, uh, just... hold on, Cam. You know how on uh, In the Air tonight, um, there's that one part where they put an effect on the vocals where you hear what he sings before he sings it? You yeah, know, it's yeah. kind of like that. That's what Cameron always sounds like. It's always this weird, like, vortex that he's in. I can't I can't mimic it because I, I I don't have the technology with me right now. But but anyway, so yeah, Cameron, you always sound like you're on the space station or, or calling from some far away remote place. Are you on speakerphone? Um, oh my God. Uh, God I was. Me. Now uh-huh. I'm on my regular. Now I got it off. Yeah. Now you sound headset. much better. Yeah. You thank sound you. much better. Please, from now on, do it that way. Okay. Yeah. Enough with the speakerphone. But. I just had to call back. I'm sorry. I looked up. I looked up Mr. Busey of Mr. Okay. <laughs> okay, Cameron. But I looked, awesome. Right. I didn't realize who I was talking to. So. Okay, that's fine. Yes, Listen. I have seen. Listen, Cam, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Cameron. Yes. Jake, yep, is, Jake, is, Cam. Jake is not going to lose sleep over you not knowing who he was. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure. It's Okay. Nobody knows who I am. <laughs> but now he does know who you are, Jake. So now you can rest easy. Hey, listen, Jake. Yeah, I feel better. <laughs> yeah. I look forward to uh, being not only co-stars uh, in this uh, movie together, but also co-producers. Um, we'll have a lot of fun when you come to town. And uh, thank you very much for calling in. But I'm going to let you get on with your life now, because I'm sure you have much better things to do than talk with us. Oh, well, thank you for having me, you guys. Y'all have a great evening, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again, not just in an elevator shaft, but uh, <laughs> in person as well. Yes, me too, me too. Thanks <laughs> thanks a lot for calling. I really appreciate it, though. All right, you guys. Have a good night. All right, thanks. You too. Bye-bye. See you, Jake. All right, so that was uh, that was pretty fun. Jake's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's nice to talk to. Yeah, fun yeah. guy, fun guy. Yeah, but you I know, have, you can I, tell those Buseys are fun people. Yeah, you no, know, it's a lot of fun. I, you know, I, I have a handful of actors that. It's funny because you do, uh, you know, movies and you meet so many people, but you very rarely come away with, you know. Friends, yeah. I mean, you know, because those people are hard; they can't make well, connections. Well, every, everybody's going from one film to the next. Yeah, and, but, you know, the, but even just, if they were all working on the but, same, let's say they're working on the same, like soap opera for twenty years together. Yeah. Oh yeah, they don't. They hang still out. can't make connections. No, no, no. Because they're so, damaged. They're damaged people. Yeah. Right. Well, you have to be damaged <laughs> to get into that business, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't know about that, but I don't know. I'm pretty damaged. But uh, but yeah, no. So over the years. It, it, oddly enough, I mean, I, I just have a handful of actors that I like and that I are friends with, yeah, you know, yeah. that I actually go and hang out with and stuff. Um, the rest are acquaintances, you know, you run into them on the street or something. Hey, how's it going? You know, but uh, rarely, you know, in one film, you know, if you do yeah. five films in a year, you might come away with, you know, one actor or actress that you like become friends with. You know, how did you become friends with him? How did you meet him? He was in uh, Last Man Club. Okay. You so, know. oh, so n- not too long ago, you yeah, became yeah, friends. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, he gotcha. was in Last Man Club, and and uh, uh, he came to a couple of parties that you know my uh, Shane was having, and he'd come hang out with us there. And mm-hmm. So yeah, just uh, you know, he and there's a, there's a, there's about. Well, five or six guys that you know actually are friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, over everybody, the years, and, yeah. Everybody needs friends, Bo. Absolutely. Everybody needs friends, and our friends are you, our listeners, and our beautiful sponsors. So we're going to take a break. You can hear from them. We've got a couple of new ones. We've got a couple of new ones. So uh, stick around, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that talk with Gase, Bu- Gase Busey, Jake Busey, and we will uh, see you after the break. We'll be right back. Now would be a good time to get up and stretch. Blood clots are deadly. We'll be back. Ever wanted to be a part?
part of a movie production? Well, now is your chance. Hope Kelly is still struggling with heartache several years after her abrupt life-changing decision to buy an apple farm outside the small town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. But the loneliness of isolation gradually replaced the peace she initially found on the farm. Sent reeling when her fiancé left her for another woman before a previous Christmas, Hope has sworn off Christmas and relationships. But when her brother Ryan's old army buddy Nick shows up to the farm and is immediately taken with Hope, the temperature starts to rise. Still, it will take a Christmas miracle in the form of Charlie to help mend Hope's heart and allow her to trust again and find love. Join writer, producer, and director Bo Brinkman in the production of A Gettysburg Christmas with named talents like Jake Busey and Lee Majors. The script has tailored scenes to shoot at specific locations to highlight the beauty, history, and capture the Christmas spirit of Gettysburg with the goal of inspiring viewers to visit in droves. Those of you who have been wanting another movie to revitalize interest in visiting our awesome town have finally gotten your wish. And now you can be a part of getting this project off the ground. Bo and company are turning to you, the citizens of Gettysburg and the lovers of Gettysburg, to make this grassroots effort work. No Hollywood BS, just pure Christmas joy and romance. Just click the link in the show notes to get started or go to GoFundMe.com and search for A Gettysburg Christmas. You've heard us promote various ways that you can help us keep the show going, but one one way we haven't pushed too much is our sutlery at addressinggettysburg.com slash shop. That's a shame because we have designs over there by talented artists like Ty DeWitt of 1863 Designs and Mike Stretch of the Heritage Depot. So now we're promoting it. Buying shirts, hoodies, mugs, and other items from our sutlery not only helps us keep the lights on, but it also helps guys like Ty and Mike, and it helps spread the word about the show every time you wear an item or you sip from your mug. So head over to addressinggettysburg.com slash shop and grab some merch. It's the perfect Christmas gift for the Gettys nerd in your family. That's addressinggettysburg.com slash shop. Our favorite bookstore in Gettysburg is For the Historian, located at 42 York Street. Isn't it, Eric? You're darn tootin', Matt. <laughs> it's because they have the best selection of Civil War books in Gettysburg, both new and used, and online they have even more books to choose from. But Matthew, what if the Civil War is simply not my thing? Not a problem, my fine four-fendered friend. This is For the Historian, after all. They cover history from the ancient world to the 21st century with a strong selection of World War II and American Revolution books. It's astounding how they squeeze thousands of titles from Osprey, Savas Beatty, UNC Press, and more into their store. And it's also astounding how you and I both squeeze into our pants every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, handsome, they have a warehouse too, and that's where they keep all those books that are available online at ForTheHistorian.com. And folks, if you go to ForTheHistorian.com now and order books until you're blooming the face, be sure you mention that you heard about them on Addressing Gettysburg in the note to seller box and they will refund your shipping costs. What if I prefer to browse in the store and don't want to go online to get my book? Great question Doodlebug. Just mention Addressing Gettysburg at checkout and they'll take 20% off the retail price of your item. So go to ForTheHistorian.com stop by 42 York Street or call 717-685-5207 That's ForTheHistorian.com or 717-685 855-2007. Need a core badge or other insignia for your uniform? Then check out the badge maker. Here's what some of his satisfied customers had to say. Miranda said, I ordered an identification disc from Joe and it's fantastic. He hand stamped it exactly as I wanted. It has a great rough on campaign feel to it and was reasonably priced to boot. Greg said, my unit has purchased from him in the past, quality badges and good service. And Jerry S says, the badge maker is the go-to place for accurate replica Civil War badges. Visit CivilWarCoreBadges.com and attach a message with your order saying you heard about him on addressing Gettysburg. Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, Gettysburg's premier museum, is housed in the historic Lutheran Seminary building constructed in 1832, a witness to the first day of battle. The museum's three floors of exhibits connect visitors to the dilemmas that led to the Civil War, 
provide a powerful and personal view of the battle's first day and explore one of the battlefield's largest hospitals. No visit to Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center is complete without a guided tour of the building's famous cupola, where on the eve of battle, officers and civilians saw thousands of Confederate soldiers' campfires burning to the west, and Brigadier General John Buford watched for vital federal reinforcements as fighting erupted on the morning of July 1st. Today, you can stand where Buford stood and discover how this view helped chart the course of the Battle of Gettysburg. Your trip to Gettysburg is not complete without a serious visit to Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, Gettysburg's premier museum. Purchase tickets online at seminaryridgemuseum.org or call 717-339-1300. To get tickets or a cupola tour, listeners may call or walk in and mention address in Gettysburg or by ordering online using the promo code AG1863 for 20% off. Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center. It began here. There's a devil to pay. This special episode of Addressing Gettysburg is brought to you in part by me, audiobook narrator Mike Scott, narrator of Savas Beattie's Bloody Autumn, the Shenandoah Valley Campaign of 1864, and unlike anything that ever floated, the Monitor and Virginia and the Battle of Hampton Roads. If you are an author or publisher interested in having your titles produced as audiobooks, or even just in learning more about the process, give me a shout. You can find my contact info on my website, mikescottvoice.com. That's mikescottvoice.com. Hey, historian, author, and licensed battlefield guide Tim Smith, Matt gave me a full minute, so let me ask you an important question. Isn't it about time that John Burns, Hero of Gettysburg, became an audiobook? Sickles has an audiobook. You know Jenny Wade is going to deserve an audiobook. Let's give John a shot. Get in touch, Tim. It's MikeScottVoice.com. I'm Mike Scott, your voice of history. And Civil War Trails. It's the world's largest open-air museum, and they offer over 1,300 sites across six states. Drive the Gettysburg Campaign turn by turn, paddle to Frederick Douglass's birthplace, or hike to remote earthworks and artillery positions. Visit CivilWarTrails.org to request a brochure and explore their interactive map. Follow Civil War Trails and create some history of your own. Hey, Gettysburg business owners. Winter is just around the bend, and you know what that means. No tourists. But just because people aren't coming to you doesn't mean you can't bring your business to them. If you ship, you're still in the game. And if you're a seasonal business, the time to advertise for your next season is in the off season when people are making their plans. So what's an affordable yet highly effective way of reaching those people? Well, it's not radio. It's not TV, and it's certainly not print. Step out of the Jurassic era of advertising and run an ad on Addressing Gettysburg. We just reached 1 million downloads, and we're growing by the tens of thousands every month. Beyond that, our audience is happy to support those who support their favorite podcast. So email sales at Addressing Gettysburg for more information about advertising on our show. We look forward to helping your business grow. That's sales at AddressingGettysburg.com. You're listening to... The Addressing Gettysburg Podcast with Matt Cowery. Was that a ghost? Nah. Ghosts aren't real. You're back with Addressing Gettysburg today. Here's Matt. <sighs> That's right. Watching Mike try to put his headphones on. There we go. Good job, Mikey. Well, that was fun. I, I, I had a good time talking with Jake. I hope he enjoyed himself. Uh, it sounded like he did. Sounded like it. Yeah, no. I mean, you know, it, it normally you, these these people uh, aren't uh, used to when you are doing an interview. The first thing they do is put you on with a caller who's never heard of you. <laughs> 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 so, so uh, we, did, you know, I was afraid I uh, made the wrong move there by no, doing that. No, but but Cam, care. of course, redeemed himself. He, uh, I'm glad I took him because, you know, if I didn't take him that second time, we would have never known that he researched Jake yeah. and yeah. found out that he's one of his favorite actors. Apparently, did you <laughs> I got that. Yeah, he's, not, he's, he's like. I just looked you up, and not only are you, but you and your dad are some of my favorite actors. Of course, when he listed all the movies that he had seen, they were all John Wayne movies. Yeah. And I don't think Gary Busey would... Yeah, McC <laughs> <laughs> Which is like one McClintock. of the worst John Wayne movies. <laughs> McClintock. <laughs> McClintock. <laughs> McClintock, Rio Bravo, Rio Grande, Rio Lobo, Rio de Janeiro, <laughs> The Horse Soldiers... 
<laughs> oh boy, how are you doing, Mike? I'm doing well. Yeah. Yeah. No injuries this week. No. Nope. Everything's okay. Yeah. Good. So good. 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 We like. Don't want to jinx that. it. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You got to be careful. Uh, so uh, <laughs> now, are you uh, are you coming with us to Brandy Station? Yeah, I'll be up there. Now we're recording uh, an episode for the 160th anniversary next year, as I said earlier in the show, and uh, you uh, you're a guide there now. Yes, I am. So you're going. This is going to be an ask a guide where you're going to actually be <laughs> a guide. Yeah, one of those up there. Yeah. Yeah. On Fleetwood Hill. So now I'm going to be asking wow. you questions instead of you sending questions in for me to ask other people. Well, now the pressure's on. Bottom know. rail on top now, <laughs> right? Yeah, so you don't have to wade through my questions. And, or I, I might just send six questions in just for kicks and you giggles. <laughs> yeah, and dude, you know it, what? Do that. It, do that. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's an anniversary show, so we don't actually do yeah. the questions on those anymore. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that would be fun, though. I think we're going to have a good time. We're going to do a tour in the morning. And then we're going to uh, do the show in the afternoon with Chris Army, yourself, right. and Tracy Bear. Right. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to do it on Fleetwood Hill, if I'm not mistaken. We are. Yeah. That's the That's the plan. And That'd it's be a, cool. It's the best place to do it, to be honest with you. Is it? Yeah. Why? You can see everything? Yeah, from there. Yeah. And that's the key to the entire battlefield. Is it that big of a hill? Um, yeah, it's actually a fairly good ridge yeah. there. And it gives you a great view of the surrounding Culpeper County. You okay. can see all the way to the Blue Ridge Mountains. Oh. It's absolutely gorgeous hmm. uh, from up there. Nice, flat and level. Okay. And some shade up there, so it's not... We're not oh, okay, so it's not just a bald hill. No, there's some trees up there. Good, good, And good. so there used to be a, a house up there, but uh, since the ABT took it over and they started kind of preserving that land, they took down the house. I remember... So it's really... It's great. Some great waysides up there, too. In the 80s, there used to be a McDonald's there. And they called it the Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, come do, on. Do, 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 do come goes, on. The, there goes the Willard uh, button again. So, do, do, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, but uh, oh, I, I didn't have it up. Well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other one is um, Buford's Knoll. Buford's Knoll is also fantastic, but you can't see as much from up there. It's just secluded and off the beaten path. So, so you've been uh, a guide there now since May, right? I have. And how many tours have you done so far? Maybe four or five. Four or five. Okay, yeah. so we got to we got to get uh, people requesting Mikey Lentz, and that that's uh, <laughs> actually something I was going to ask you about. But w where do people like who would they call? You go to Culpeper Battlefield Tours. You just uh -huh. Google that. They have a website that you can be able to contact. Usually, it'll come through Fair Harbor for me. Okay, um, that they're booking a, a particular tour. Right. And so yeah, they're, they're great slate of guides. If I'm not available, there are a handful of really good guides up there. Some people from Gettysburg who have made that crossover. Mm -hmm. It's like Army and Jason Heileman and Tracy Bear. So some really good people are, are part of this process. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get uh, everybody except for Jason. I, I've invited Jason on the show. He said he'd do it. We just haven't set anything up yet. But so Tracy, Chris, and yourself are uh, you know regulars on the show. Right. And uh, so, yeah, so if you are interested, if you're ever going to be in that area, uh, you got to give them a call. What's what's the number? Do you know? Not off the top of my head. What's the name of the company? Culpepper Battlefield Tours. Culpepper Battlefield Tours. So so give them a call and uh, mm -hmm. say, hey, <laughs> I want six questions. And they'll be like, who? <laughs> and then, yeah. And, and, and I think it's uh, fascinating, too, because, you know, yes, there's Eric's view towards cavalry, but... Fuck them. <laughs> there you go. We need to get that in there. Mm. Um, <laughs> but the reality is the consequences of the Battle of Brandy Station are going to reverberate throughout the entire Gettysburg campaign. Yeah. It's going to be one of the major reasons why Jeb Stewart goes on his ride. Yeah. So understanding Brandy Station at the very beginning of that campaign helps to understand how that campaign is going to unfold moving forward. Hmm. It's uh, kind of it's the kickoff to the Gettysburg campaign, right? It, it is. It's the first uh, fight. And it, it, absolutely, and it's really cinematic. It mm. really is. Really, because what you'll have, I'll just give you an example. Yeah, yeah. So here, the six Pennsylvania cavalry's coming to the edge of a tree line. It's an open field right in front of them. At the other end of the field are sixteen artillery cannons of Stuart's horse artillery. Up comes a courier to the commander of the 6th PA, and he says, By the compliments of General John Buford, I'm here to order Major Morris to attack that hill in front of you. 
It, was it Robert Morris? Yeah, it was, and he's the great grandson of the financier of the revolution. Aha! Wow. wow. And my father's best friend from childhood's name is Robert Morris. There you go. So, Aha. sunrise, sunset. Mm -hmm. And so, Morris will turn to his and give the order, sabers out. Uh oh. And the men are going to onshi their sabers, and begin at a trot across the field. Mm -hmm. Eventually, mm -hmm. when they get halfway through the field. Morris is going to wave his sword, and they're going to straight charge at the Confederate gun line. Gosh. Meanwhile, canister and shell are just Ugh. ripping apart their, their oh my compact God. Can you imagine? And as soon as they about get close to the cannons, here comes the Confederate cavalry charging uh. the other direction uh. right into them. Bam. Uh. Very cinematic. That's only one story. It's mm. very cinematic. Was that six Virginia? What were the casualties? About 800 for the Union, about 500 for the Confederates. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. But the Confederates one, are, we're kind of, you're kind of uh, iffy on that. They're, I, I kind of think it's a little low. Just Do you think there the, were more Confederate were more. casualties? Yeah. Uh, Why? Uh, they were never great at reporting the casualties anyway. <laughs> well, that's true. And, yeah. yeah. And so this is out of 20,000 who are fighting each other. It's the largest cavalry battle in the history of the North American continent. Wow. And it features 3,000 infantry mm. involved in this fight for the Union side. They're going to bring them into this. How, how many horses died? Oh. It was a slaughter pin. Uh, Fleetwood Hill is just, it's bad afterwards because one of the combatants calls the battle for Fleetwood Hill a very promiscuous fight. Mm. Mm. And so there's charge and counter charge and they're just a melee up there on that hill. It's back and forth for a better part of a handful of hours, two or three hours. I think uh, we have one of your uh, colleagues on the phone right now. Is this Tracy? Hey, man. How are you? Good. How are you, Tracy? All right. Just came in from mowing the grass and turned on the show, and I heard Mikey talking, so I thought, hey, I'll give him a call and make sure everything's cool for tomorrow. Oh, there you go. Good. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. This is going to be fun. Uh, you yeah. mean for, for Saturday? Yeah. For Saturday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm heading down tomorrow. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I am too. I am too. Uh, yeah, for Saturday. So, now, so here, um, you know, you do that auto screening, the talk to text, and uh, it doesn't always get what people say <laughs> very clearly. So here's what it says. It says, hey, see bear, my topic is why the hell doesn't Eric like the Camry? We need to break him in tomorrow. Brit Toyota ma makes a terrible vehicle. <laughs> well, you got, you got some awesome spell checks, don't you? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, we need to break him in tomorrow. Brit, make sure he's there. So would you like to uh, clarify <laughs> what you meant to say or what you actually said? <laughs> Yeah, something alluding to the fact that for someone that looks so much like Jeb Stewart, he sure disses the cavalry a lot. <laughs> he does. That beard is way more cavalier than uh, than anything else, for sure. Have you seen George Sykes? Yeah. That's <laughs> true. But he would have ride, ridden a horse all the time anyway. George Sears Green? Yeah, probably on a horse. Mm -hmm. All these guys wear a horse. The guys that were walking around, did they have big long beards? Yeah, of course they did. Still in the infantry. Of course they did. It's true. He's still in the infantry. Uh, yeah. So Tracy, what? So we're doing a tour in the so, morning, right? <clears throat> yeah, and Chris is going to join us. His schedule freed up in the morning, so he's going to join us for the tour. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then uh, we'll do the show. Um, I guess we should probably bring lunch or something because doing a tour and then going um, right into the show is going to. There's where we meet is a convenience store, so mm -hmm. we can get something there and use the facilities and that sort of thing. Okay. So, that's usually what I do, but if you want to bring something to, to eat, that's up to you. Yeah, no, a convenience store will be enough. Yeah, there's there's a subway in there. There's also oh, a there's chicken a, place in there as yeah. well. So. Uh, chicken. Ooh, Royal Farms chicken? Oh, no. and they have bagged chicken. Oh, forget that. Matt, I think they have oh, bagged, bagged chicken. chicken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's funny. Chicken in a bag. That's funny you brought that up, Tracy, because the, the guy, uh, Jeff, who, who brought me that bag of rotten chicken, um, called me today, and he asked me, have you had any more bags of chicken from a convenience store lately? And I was like, not since you gave me that death trap. <laughs> and it's funny. You're the second person that brought it up in like the oh, last man. three hours. That was horrifying. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, you threw oh, it God. outside, and the next day there was a dead You threw it outside, and the next day it. there was a dead raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it smelled horrible. 
God, I would have walked it back in and. You know, yeah, what well, are you didn't. doing? I told him that. I said, take it back. And he's like, nah. Then he didn't do it. All right. Well, Trace, uh, we're going to have fun uh, this weekend. It's going to be really interesting, yep. I think. Um, I look forward to going back there. I haven't been there since I was a kid. So I know a lot has changed since then. And uh, we didn't actually take a tour because there wasn't a tour to take. So we just kind of stood there. So this will be good. This will be good. And then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, you can. Chris. Oh, go ahead. Mike and Chris and I will treat you right. We'll take you to some of the great places there around and get as much uh, much of the field in as we can in, in the limited time we have. Great. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for the call, Tracy. We're going to wrap up the show. So, what, uh, Oh, yeah, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, go ahead. What, All right. One, All right. I'll see you Saturday. All right. Thanks, Tracy. Bye-bye. Uh, one, one more thing I wanted to add. Um, there's two tiers to a Gettysburg Christmas. Uh, one is the fundraiser. Mm -hmm. The other is investment. So uh, if someone wants to do more than than just you know be part of us to you know, to help us with the one side the fundraising side you can also invest. Uh, we have an LLC and uh, the points are three thousand uh, a, a, a a unit. So explain ex okay. unit. Explain so, this to to the layman. So, a point so there, is what it's percentage one, point. It's a one one. Um, unit investors unit is one point of a hundred so it's one percent ownership of the film got it so you know in my past films you know people bought it all depends on on the budget of the film mm -hmm. this is uh we're selling a hundred points at three thousand dollars a point which gives you one percent ownership in the film you know, most people they buy five points or ten points, stuff like that. So, yeah. so there's two different ways. There's two tiers. There's one if you just want to help the cause and be a part of it. Um, the other is if you want to invest and have ownership. So, there's two ways to do to do it. Yeah. So let's see here. So if, if anybody can... wants to invest, they should contact you through. Uh, the well, no. So show. Eric has the um, uh, link. Did you put it in the? It's in the description. Okay, so it's in the comments and the description, ladies and gentlemen. So the comments here in the description of the show. Um, that's where it is. If you listen on uh, 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 Patreon, it will also be in those comments or that uh, description yeah, as we well. We can get out a, a, a package. Yeah. We can get a package out to anybody that's interested. You want me to go over um, what the different levels are? Uh, on GoFundMe? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, yeah, All idea. right. So if you donate $100 or more, uh, you get a copy of the film and a cast and crew t-shirt. Does the cast and crew sign it? No. Okay. Uh, $250 or more, you get two tickets to the premiere. Now, do you get, like, when you move up a level, do you get everything that's below you as well? Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get everything $100 gets and two tickets to the premiere. Uh, $500 or more, you're going to get the opportunity to appear as a featured extra in the movie with a signed copy of the script. Travel expenses to filming locations are not included, though. Uh, what is, um, an, a, what is a, a featured extra as opposed to just an extra? Well, and uh, with an extra, there's there could be ten people there, you know, like see, you know, ten people in. A featured extra is someone that is like oh, close to the principal, or yeah, close to the principal. Maybe have a line, um, you know. Oh. They're, they're called under five. Okay. So, you know, uh, we'll work somebody in, maybe a, over the counter, you know, handing the lead. Yeah, uh, right. They're. Coffee. So, like, Eric could be a featured extra at the coffee shop or at right. the uh, chocolate shop. Yes, actually. Be still and, my heart. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. It's just going to cost you $500 or more, Eric, okay? We don't do this for free. Plus everything else. So, yeah. So, yeah. All and right. $1,000 or more, you get all the previous incentives, of course, plus a limited signed lithograph, lithograph of Saks Bridge in winter by the famous Civil War artist Dale Gallen. The bridge is going to be featured in three scenes of the film. Um, we saw that picture before. <clears throat> and uh, $1,500 or more, you get everything that you get before, plus a special acknowledgement to you or your business in the film credits. So kind of like you're a producer, or is it like no, special just, thanks to? It's, a, it's more of a special thanks, and and we've done this before where somebody will have, own a company and they want their logo at, on the end credits. Mm -hmm. and we're like, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So... And a special thanks. So I'm going to have that. to put in $1,500 or more then to uh, get addressing Gettysburg's logo on the uh, end of the credits. 
Um, yeah, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, Bill, that's Gordon. If you're listening, but can you're I borrow fifteen hundred dollars? You're, you're a producer, so you know. yeah. Oh, no, I know, but I, I, I would like to get my dressing. Yeah, Gettysburg gets a special thanks. Oh, okay, good. Oh, yeah, because we're promoting it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So f you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get our name there, and it's gonna say produced by Matt Lothario Callery, because mm-hmm. for a romance film, I use Lothario, Lothario as my yes, middle name. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of people don't know that. All yeah, right. There'll well, be, there'll yeah. be three or four producers on the film. And uh, and you're one of them. All right. Well, this is exciting. Now it's exciting. Now it's going to be a good film. (laughs) No, this is going to be a fun film. It's going to be a good film. I think a lot of people are going to like it. And guys, listen, you want your wives to come here? Wait until this movie comes out. Make them watch it. And then they're going to be like, oh, my God, I love it. Let's go. It's cue it. (laughs) <laughs> and then you're going to th- then they're going to come and want to spend a week here and go see all the sites where the two main characters fell in love yes. in a Gettysburg Christmas. Indeed. And and I think we're going to surprise you. Uh you're like how are these guys going to make a romantic film, right? A lot of people don't realize Bo and myself are big romantics at heart. I mean, you should hear us talking about the ways we love people uh, and uh, and all the wonderful things we do to express our love. Is that uh, right? Oh, my God. You, Eric, you've, we never talk about it around you because we're afraid you'll beat us up. That's but, like, <laughs> every, you know, we, mostly it's pr- in private, you know, or on the phone. <clears throat> right? All right. So the link is in the description. <laughs> Go ahead and, uh, and please donate to this. Uh, the goal is $100,000. $100,000. That's the goal. But the beauty of GoFundMe is if you come in at $99,000, you get to keep it. Unlike Kickstarter, where if you don't make your goal, yeah. that's it, right? right so this right. is the better way to go. Right. And then um, along with the investors that are, you know, we can make this movie and we can make a beautiful film for what we have. Yeah. And honestly, if you have, uh, uh, you know, deep pockets and you want to invest in this, so how would they get a hold of you to do that? Well, through or you. Just through me? Yeah, yeah. All right, so Matt at addressinggettysburg.com, and then I'll put you in touch with Bo. Um, otherwise, that's all I've got for today. There is no news. Of course, Veronica is not here. She got detained at work. Literally detained. The cops came, and they put her in handcuffs. <laughs> um, and they, no, 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 not like that kind of detained. But it was just uh, basically, you know, uh, just work went longer than uh, it's supposed to go. So that's it. Um, and that's it for us tonight. We'll be back at our normal Friday next week. Next week, don't forget, get out of the car tour. We hope to see you all there. Thank you all for listening. Hope you enjoy the show. Donate. Addressing Gettysburg today is hosted by Matt Callery and Veronica Brestensky, Esquire. Produced by Eric, the producer, Moni. Applause led by Owen the Claver. Guests of Addressing Gettysburg today stay wherever they want. That's not our concern. To be a guest on the show, send an email to eric at addressinggettysburg.com. Addressing Gettysburg broadcasts from the Gettys Bike Tour Studios. Get a 15% discount on your next tour with Getty's Bike. I'm Huevos Grande, the voice of addressing Gettysburg today. Thanks for listening. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck.